Kaylee, what is our fourth main topic today? Fourth main topic comes to us from Anton Sugar. Hey, Campia crew, looks like you were right. Kareem Daniel, right-hand man to Bob Chapek, is going to be following him out the door. I think the shakeup is great, and it hopefully signals a return to the old model that propelled Disney to the top of the world. Now, maybe they can court Peter Rice to come back in. Hmm. <laughs> Anyhow, what do you think of this news? Was it only a matter of time? And how good is this for Disney? Thanks, and bring on the filthy. All right, John, thanks. what do you think? I, I, I think here's, look, we talked about this briefly on our open mic yesterday, but it needs to be brought up here. So I, when the news of Bob Iger coming back as CEO and, and that Bob Chapek was out, I had said, we're going to find out real fast that Kareem Daniel is going to be out too. Now, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about. So Kareem Daniel, what has been a very faithful and loyal Bob Chapek Lieutenant for many years at Disney. And so when Bob Chapek came in, and this is where I soured on Bob Chapek, because I was all for his hiring at first, but then one of his first moves was the one that made me go, what? And that was this. One of Bob Chapek's first move, moves was he created a new division called, uh, what was it? Is the Disney Media and Entertainment Division? I think it's DMED, Disney Media and Entertainment Division. It was a brand new layer of bureaucracy, a new layer of middle management, if you will. That he, But the problem was, that this new department, this new org, had the most power at Disney than anybody. And this new DMED, the Disney Media and Entertainment Division, they had kind of full power to dictate what projects did and did not get made. They had the, the, the authority of the P&L lines, which always used to stay with the studio heads. They even had final authority to decide where projects would go. Whereas that authority used to rest with the studio heads, with the individual studio heads under Disney. That if a movie got made, the studio head would decide. I have an image of it. But, yeah, there it is. <laughs> That's the DMED right there. <laughs> bringing terror to the, to the universe of Disney. <laughs> so they would ultimately have the decision-making power that if, like, if Kevin Feige came out, so great, I just made this Marvel movie. The DMED had the authority to say, great, we're going to put that on Disney+. Plus," Which is why what happened at Pixar happened at Pixar with their films, because no longer did Pixar have the ability or the heads of Pixar to determine and decide where their project was going to go. It was now the DMED under Bob Chapek and his lieutenant, Kareem Daniel. And they decided, your Pixar movies are going to Disney+, Plus. to which Pixar was like, what? You're putting soul straight to home streaming? What? You're putting Turning Red? We think this is a real special movie. Yeah, it's going to be great. We're going to we're going to dump it on streaming. It's going to be fantastic. So that's what this whole thing was. Now, one of the bigger problems besides the fact that it was an idiotic move to create this division at all in the first place was the fact that instead of going out and getting a media executive person with tons of experience dealing with media, entertainment, movies, television stuff like that, instead Bob Chapek rewarded his faithful lieutenant who is a banker by history, and made Kareem Daniel, who, by the way, I have not a bad thing to say about Kareem Daniel. For I, I've heard some people say he's actually one of the favorite people around there. People love Kareem Daniel. Apparently, he's a super nice guy. Everybody likes him. He's a nice, kind, wonderful person. But you're telling me that with these people, these decades, centuries of combined entertainment, movie, and television experience who are heading up all these, these different studios, you're going to take a banker and you're going to give this person the decision-making authority over projects, P&L, location, distribution, all that kind of stuff, and basically made other, when it comes to the entertainment division, other than Bob Chapek, Kareem Daniels was the most powerful guy at Disney. And he was not the guy with the experience of the resume to be there. So it was not a surprise when it got announced the day after Bob Iger returned that Kareem Daniel had been outed, and he is now gone. They have begun already to dismantle the DMED, although Bob Chapek said in a memo that there are going to be some elements of the DMED that will stay in place, but that Bob Iger already put a memo saying, hey, I've got these four creative executives, and we are redoing the organizational structure. We are taking this filth garbage that Bob Chapek put in place, and we are throwing it out unceremoniously, and we are completely getting back. And he said, and I'm going to read this from the article, uh, he said, we are getting back, uh, we are reshaping Disney's streaming strategy and overall content strategy and returning to a structure that prioritizes greater decision-making by creatives. 
And he echoed that again in another outlet saying that we are going to reorganize this entire thing to make sure that the decision-making power is in the hands of the people creating the stuff. And that is one of the most key things. Now, Kareem Daniel will land on his feet because from all reports, he's a very smart executive, just maybe not an executive in the right area at the time. So yeah, listen, there's the Axis Zaslav, there's the Hammer of Iger, and it's falling fast and it's falling hard. Anyway, Rob, you heard about this, Kareem Daniels out, no surprise, but I was surprised to see how quickly it happened. What was your take on it? Well, I, I, again, I mean, he's got, <laughs> Bob Iger now has been given a hell of a lot of money to come in. I, he's not going to wait. He's going to come in to make sweeping changes. Because he's only got two years. He's got two he's got years. He's got two years to change everything. And, and this was something that was added by Chapek that he doesn't even agree with. I mean, in terms of like we've talked about on the show, you can't take it. It's not like Marvel was broken and Bob Chapek had to come in and add a level of like confine or constrict what Kevin Feige was going to do because it wasn't broken. And so you've got to give like, look, I don't think that creatives should be given the keys to any kingdom because we will put our creativity in front of, say, the money being spent. Like, hey, just give me more money. I need more money. We're not always the best people with money. I can say that right now. So it's important to have people that watch your P's and Checks Q's. and balances. Absolutely. absolutely. I'm a firm believer in that. And I think creative people in, film, in the film business work best when they are working against economic constraints. That's when real creativity can happen. But this, you're putting in a bunch of executives that don't have any experience making movies that are making decisions for people that are making movies that aren't necessarily going to be the best decisions to make. And that always happens in the film business. And that's what you've seen time and time again. And it, I think that it makes absolute sense that Chapek got rid of this division that was created because Bob, I mean, Bob Chapek is a guy who is a corporate animal. Whereas Bob Iger is a guy that's like, uh, no, I, I believe that our creatives need to have, and he, and Bob Iger knows. He doesn't need this division. He can make these decisions himself. That's why he's Bob Iger. Cliff, you hear about this. Again, I, I don't think Kareem departing is a surprise to anybody once Bob Chapek wasn't there anymore. But I was a little bit surprised by the timing of it, how quickly it happened. How do you see this? It, it, it reminded me of uh, like the end of Beverly Hills Cop 2 where they fire Lutz and Biddle. It's like Biddle's the assistant and he's like, Robert Ridgey's like, you're fired. You're fired too. And he's like, what did I do? Uh, that's what this felt like. But... <laughs> It, it, you know, there's an interesting thing that I, I looked up because I was like, I, do, I wasn't sure. Um, in, in 2019, when Iger was still fully in control, Disney or Disney adjacent sort of things, uh, including like with Spider-Man, released, I think, 11 movies to and like the top eight movies that year domestically were all Disney or Spider-Man. In 2022 you know how many movies disney has released theatrically as of today no four thor dr strange black panther and lightyear they'll have strange worlds tomorrow and they'll have avatar next month but it's like they've released nothing this year they've turning red went to disney plus this thing you know so those creative decisions that were made by people who had ulterior motives in terms of what you're going to do with your streaming service or how you're going to, it didn't work out. you made no money. And, and it's interesting that this converges sort of with, with Zaslav and Warner with him coming out and saying, you can't spend money on these things and not monetize them. You cannot yeah. make movies for HBO max that aren't being monetized in some way. And I think you saw that with Disney plus this year. I mean, they had disenchanted. You could have thrown that in theaters. You could have thrown the Hocus, Hocus Pocus, Pocus too. You could should have thrown have that in theaters. theaters and made and made some money. You had movies that you could have released and you chose not to. You chose to essentially give them away because with Disney Plus, it's about retention, but what it's really about is subscriber growth. And and you go, okay, well, those movies. How much did those movies grow your subscription? Zero. Zero. Therefore, you made no money on those investments. So. And you'll never make money. On and you'll never investments. make money on those on those things. So now, you know, dissolving, you know, the, the, this council and getting rid of all of these people that were were might have been great people, but they were there doing the wrong job. They were there doing a job that they shouldn't have been doing. And I think 
Iger coming in knows this is not how we built this brand. This is not how we became successful. This is not how I left the company. And, and, and just in terms of the raw numbers, I don't think Disney in 2019, they hit 4.4 billion in just domestic box office. Oh. I don't think they've hit a billion this year in domestic box office. They're close now with Black Panther and they'll obviously they'll hit it after Avatar, but it's like, that's a huge drop off. And it, and it has everything to do because Dr. Strange and Thor made more money than the last ones did. So it has nothing to do with the quality of, of what you're making. And it has to do with the fact that you're not releasing anything and you're basically using this stuff as a loss leader for your streaming service. And I, I think, you know, with the earnings call and with everything else that's going on, like this had to happen. And I, I'm not surprised that Bob Iger came in and was just like, all you people that were doing things this way, You're gone. we're not doing it this way anymore. So there's no reason for you to be here anymore. All right, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this? Now that Bob Chapek is gone, they've moved quickly to re remove his top lieutenant who is there, who is representing the DMED as well. And that's now gone. How do you interpret this? Are you surprised that Iger is moving that fast? Whatever you think, Jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Manscaped. This holiday season, I'll be giving thanks to our friends over at Manscaped. Everyone loves turkey and stuffing, but you'll be looking like dessert with the help of Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0. The leaders in below-the-waist grooming have blessed you with the ultimate Thanksgiving dinner topic. Tell your in-laws about your new cutting-edge ball trimmer and gift yourself or the man in your life the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Trim up your pumpkins by going to manscaped.com and use the code CAMPIA for free shipping and 20% off. And this year I am so thankful for Manscaped because like most of you guys, I used to use Neanderthalic Dark Age methods to trim my balls. Not anymore thanks to Manscaped. It's time for all of us to give thanks to Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 or as I like to call it, the perfect package for your package. Inside, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, Crop Preserver ball deodorant, Crop Reviver toner, Performance Boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goodies. The heart of the package, their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code CAMPIA at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the promo code CAMPIA. Be thankful this holiday season for the best gift of all from Manscaped. Your balls will thank you.